friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you this cute little note card holder holding some new note cards that we have in the Stamping Up Annual Catalog 2019 to 2020. Um, I got this idea from Gaynor Boyce, a UK demo, Stamp with Joy, so I would like to thank her for that inspiration. So as you can see, I'm using a new stamp set. Now this stamp set is a hostess host stamp set. It's called Time for Tags. It's got five different different tags in it with little sentiments that correspond with the different greetings on the tags and it is easily punched out with the timeless tag punch. Now this timeless tag punch is in the mosaic mood suite in the catalog. It has the memorable mosaic stamp set bundled with this punch. And so I have the punch. I did not get the stamp set yet, but I love this punch. I'm gonna be using this a ton. And um, you can also get the beautiful mosaic mood paper in that suite. So we're gonna to have to show that in a video soon too. It's gorgeous. It's got like a very beautiful sheen of like a coating on it. So anyhow, back to what we're doing here. So we're gonna be making this note card holder and we're going to be putting in four of the most adorable little note cards. So in the catalog, you'll see the scalloped note cards and envelopes, and these are so sweet. They have um, balmy blue, calypso coral, and old olive, and what they say is a light pink. So what I did is I designed these cards using a designer paper. Now I used the retired one because I didn't have the new um, color families for the new catalog yet. So I used the retired ones. And what I did on each card, as you can see, each card has the focal point of the striped DSP on the side, which I don't know why I made this one. Oh, okay, I have two of them going horizontal and two of them going vertical. And so these DSPs are all four inches by two and a half. So four inches by two and a half. Don't worry about writing down the materials and the measurements that I use on the video because you can look at it on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. Underneath my photo, there's a search bar. Just pop in the name of the stamp set, time for tags, or the technique I'm doing, which this technique is actually called um, the scalloped note cards and envelopes. So if you put that in there, you'll be taken to the link and you can see it. So I put a designer paper on each of the fronts and then, Ah, look at this. I took the opposite side of the stripes, which was the polka dots, and I put a strip of the polka dots on each card. So that was such a cute little addition with that scallop because the white was really cute, but then that really brought it out on the card. And then on each one of them, I just did uh, stamp and blends and on this one I used Highland Heather. Now I did uh, pair together this pretty mint macaron with this pink since I couldn't really match the pink and so I just did the happiest birthday celebrate and then this cute one on balmy blue I used the Calypso Coral to pull out the Calypso Coral from this card and then I just did some stamping blends with daffodil and balmy blue and the Calypso Coral and then on our cute little old olive one, I add the blue sky behind there and I did some Daffodil Delight and some Calypso Coral here and some old olive and a little bit of soft suede. And then this cute little giraffe, I did Calypso Coral dots to match with that. And then a little bit of soft suede on his wheels. And so all of them have such a cute little sentiment with them too. So these were adorable. So I decided I wanted to make the little box to go with it. And when I found this box, I was like, this is perfect. So then I thought, oh, I can use this stamp here to do the, uh, um, to do the front of it, but I didn't really want to put the welcome on there. So I decided I would just grab a piece of paper here. Here we go. Alrighty. And I wanted to show you how I got the welcome not to be on there. So we're going to just set aside some of this right now and get that tag finished there. So what we're going to do is take our memento black and we're going to ink up the stamp, but before we do that, we are going to want to mask off this welcome here. And the way you would mask is you just take some scotch tape. This is a pretty tricky one because it's a small word. So what I did is I just went in and covered up the word welcome. I had to do a little trimming 
and then you just, and I'm sure all of you guys have different ways of masking. This one was just working well for me. So I looked at that and I saw that I might just trim off this little piece here. And paper snips are great with scotch tape. And I think I'm going to pull, I'm going to bring in my tweezers here and pull this one off here so I can cover the whole word. And it looks like I'm good. So then we're going to leave that tape in place where we have where where we do not want to have anything stamped. And then we're going to ink up really well the rest of the stamp. So I'm getting the rest of the edges. I'm stamping right on top of that scotch tape. You could also use a post-it note, whatever sticks in that place. So I've got it inked up very well. Now, the most important part of this technique is you don't then go like this, which I've done a hundred times before in the past. You're gonna come back and you're gonna pick up that masked tape and try not to get it on your fingers. And I'm coming back here and that's where tweezers come in really handy. So now, just give a little huff on there since we took a little bit of time. And then you're just gonna stamp that image and leave it there for a few seconds to make sure you've got a good impression. And then you don't have that word there because you had masked it off. So that is a great little technique. Then let's go ahead and just, well, let's just give that little color to that here, okay? So I'm gonna pick out my light old olive. Oh, you know, this is mossy meadow. Ah, there's my old olive. Had them down in another place on my new organizer here. So I'm just going to color in the top of my pineapple. And just a little light touch, very light touch with these blends because they work just smooth as butter when you're coloring. Okay, get that little, little tiny bit there. Okay, so we've got some old olive on the pineapple top, and then we want to put some, I'm going to do some light daffodil delight, because we have daffodil to light on our card box and on our little bird, so we're going to color that in. On the other card, actually, you know what, I used dark, that's why it's sitting on my desk. So I'm gonna actually use the dark one. And I'm just going to, I think what I did on that card is I, let me move this around here. I remember now when I made that box, I went ahead and used the dark. But then I thought it was just a little bit too dark but the the light daffodil was a little bit too light for me. So I wanted something in the medium range. So I remember I came back with my color lifter and I just went over the dark and it brought it to almost like a medium um, color of the daffodil. So then I just went and, oh, I got an ink pad open over here. So we're gonna use our timeless tag punch and we're gonna pop the paper into the punch and we're gonna get it centered there, pop it up. And now we've got what's gonna go on the front of our card and I use the stitched ovals on all the cards. So you can see here on every single one of the cards, I use that same design element with the stitched oval. And so, and that's the second largest one. And then I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back of this. And I just kept with the flat theme and I didn't pop it up any. I just put it onto the middle of that old olive. And now we're gonna be using this pretty polka dot here, but we've gotta make the holder now. Okay, so with this holder, you have two pieces and you only need one sheet of daffodil and you have two pieces of it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the first piece, which is the piece that is going to be, go across the back, fold over the top, 
and then attach to the front. So this is one piece and it is three quarters, three quarters by 10. So you'll put it into your scoring board, your scoring tool, and you're gonna score it at, aha, I have it on the wrong. Wait a second here. <laughs> okay. Ah, gosh, that's crazy. I almost wanted to give up and start a new video. Thank you for your patience. So here we are, we're at scoring at five and a quarter and six. So we're putting the 10 inch side up there. Oh golly, um, five and a quarter by six. Okay, so those are your two score lines there, five and a quarter and six, and that'll create that flap. So then we take this piece. And this is the piece that's going to create the box. And it is three and a half on the shorter end, three and a half by nine and a half, nine and a half. Okay. Then we're going to score this at three and three quarters, four and a half, eight and a quarter, and nine. Okay. So you'll put that nine and a half inch side up at the top of your scoring tool. Or if you're using your trimmer, put it at the top of your trimmer. You're going to score it at three and three quarters four and a half, eight and a quarter, and nine. And then on one of the sides, you'll flip it over here to put one of the long sides along the left side, and you're gonna score it in three quarters. You can do it on either side, but just one side, you're gonna have it scored in at three quarters. And that is our second piece. Let's get this cumbersome thing out of the way. Cumbersome, but very useful. So we know that this is going to be the outside of the card. So we need to make our box, okay? So I'm gonna put it this way so we can see the score lines. So whenever we made those score lines, we, I'm gonna actually turn it this way. We ended up, so you can see, we ended up with these little square, two little squares on the bottom. So I'm not sure if you can see that here. So I'll just draw a pencil here. So you have these two, two squares here, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the pencil there. And we're going to just snip up to that score line we made that was a three quarters inch. And we're going to score up. I mean, we're cutting up to that score line. Okay. We're going to have this little flap left over here, which was on that quarter inch there. And we're just going to snip that little flap off. We're going to snip that flap off. And then we're just going to go ahead and fold on all the score lines. Folding on all the score lines. And haha, I do have my bone folder here. So we're just gonna make a nice burnish on each of the score lines. And then on this big long one, on the little flaps. Make sure it's nice, nice deep crease. So what we're gonna be doing is putting this box together and this is gonna be the piece that's going to attach to this side here. So we know that we're gonna put some adhesive on here. So we'll get our tear tape out and we're gonna put some tear tape. And I always put the tear tape uh, right next to the score line because that's the closest part to closing your box. So you've got some score tape right there. So then you come back while the protective coating is still on there, that little thing, and you know that it's going to go this way. Now we want to get these little guys closed in here so that we can have a nice clean look to the box, okay? So that would mean on this piece we need to get these attached, but we don't want to put adhesive here because then it would be inside the box. So we're going to put adhesive on these two guys here. So if you think of it this way, your adhesive's on here, you're also going to put adhesive on those squares. And so then I'm just gonna put a little piece of tear tape on each, just two little ones on those little squares that we snipped up there. I'll stick it on there. We'll grab our paper piercer. We'll get, get these off of here. There we go. This piece off. There we go. And then another one and another one. Okay. 
then we'll go to start to put this together. So what we'll do is we'll fold this flap down and we'll get a nice square corner there, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna get a nice square corner. Make sure I'm looking at it from the right angle. Nice square corner there. So you can see now we're getting that box put together. Now, I forgot to do a little snipping. Uh, I usually snip a little bit on each of these edges before I put it together, so I need to do that. But I'm not sure how to do that. Let me get a little bit here. There, I'll just take a little bit off there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, you know it's gonna end up folding this way here and then we're gonna need to flap it down here. So that means we're gonna put adhesive on this flap, okay? So we're gonna put adhesive along this edge. Tear tape along that edge, and then just tear it off. There we go. But we're gonna go ahead and put this together first. And there we go, take off that edge, fold this down, and then get there we go. So then we get that nice square box and then we can take this last piece of tear tape off here and close up our little box. I know each time I make a box, it's one of the simplest things to do, but I actually have to stop and really think about what I'm doing, because it all makes sense, like when you fold it together, and then we have got the nice little box. We have those tabs that we adhered on the bottom, so they're not gonna cause any impeding of anything in there. So that's great, so we have our little box, and all we have to do is attach this box to there, and our card is done. But what we're going to do is I'm going to use glue, okay? And when you're doing this, like to me, I wanna put this this side, the, like the unfinished side, I don't wanna say, they're both finished pretty, but what I'm gonna do is put it on like this, okay? So that would mean this part. I'm gonna use glue because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm putting it together because that tear tape, if you don't have it exactly perfect and you try to, there's just no getting that, getting that um, apart. So I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have too much glue on the sides. I did get a little bit, um, I did get a little generous with my glue. And then what we're gonna do is just flip this over and like I said, we have a little wiggle room. So we're just gonna go down and make that flush with the bottom of that card there. So you can see it's flush around here. And that's essentially our box done. Now I thought because these were scalloped that it would be really cute if we scalloped the flap on here. So what I did is I got out my scalloped edgelet, edging punch. And if you remember how to do that, you put your paper into the punch. I remember whenever somebody finally showed me how to get these uniform across, I was like, Eureka, the light bulb went off. So if you look down at the silver part, the painted part on your punch, you can see where you want it to be. Now here, it's got, I'm seeing about the same amount on each side, and I'm just gonna press, and I have my first scallop. Now you put that back in there, and you put those scallops in the place where there's no silver, okay? And you punch, and you've got a perfect scallop. Then you go to this side and put those, whoop, put those little yellow scallops into that design part on the punch, and you know you're in the right place. Do one more punch, whoop. I was a little off there. It's really hard to do with, um, when you're on camera and the lights in your face. Oh, I know because I didn't have it over far enough. So there we go. Have it lined up. Let's see if this is gonna work. No, I am just gonna trim it. Here I was gonna show you how impressed I, 
impressive I am with this. But I think I had it, I had it in the right place. I just punched my hand slipped when I did it. Anyhow, you have a nice little scalloped edge there, okay? So you've got a nice little scalloped edge and what we're gonna do is put the designer paper on. Now I cut this designer paper a little bit longer than I needed so I could trim it off so I didn't end up like with a little edge showing here. So this is two inches wide and our box is three and three quarters. So this is a little more than three and three quarters. So what we're gonna do is put also I'm just gonna put a little glue here since it's handy or maybe not because it doesn't want to cooperate with me today so we're just gonna put it across the card and then I'm just gonna bring it just across the front of that flap how about I use my grid paper yes that would be a good thing to do so I'm gonna line up the square on the one side with the squares on the other side. And then all I have to do is come back and trim off that little edge. And so I've got that decoration on the outside and then I'm just gonna pop on my pineapple. The right way and just pop him on. And I've carried the whole theme of those time for tags using all the tags and then putting this on here in friend now uh, I've seen belly bands put on these types of boxes however I I'm not a great belly bander because it just seems like I can't get it I can do it with designer paper but I prefer to do it um, with a little bit of velcro and I found these really cute um, thin clear fasteners at uh, Joanne fabrics and so they're velcro and they're really thin so I like the fact that they were really thin. So what I'm just putting the loop and fastening the side together. But I like it because they're really thin. So whenever you're making this envelope, it's um, I had another box that I had made and it was really bulky. So what I'm gonna do is put, because this is the part you end up seeing when you open up. So you wanna have it pretty and centered on this part. So if you put it up here and then you just whoop, take remove the protective, ah, it's not gonna work for me, so we'll just remove this, put the little loop back on here, and then we're going to make sure that we have this squared off on this edge before we adhere that to that top flap. So now it's adhered there and boom, done. And all we have to do is take our cute little note cards here, the scalloped note cards in the new catalog and just put them in there a really pretty way here. I liked putting the green one in first because it went with the yellow. So then I just put the, the balmy blue and this really pretty light pink color and then the Calypso coral. So you've got, now there are 20 cards, note cards in this uh, set. So you could literally make five different gifts, lickety split, and then just make it nice and squared off. So you could make five different gifts to give to somebody with just one package of those 20 note cards. So how cute is that? A little note, cut, note card holder using this hostess set. Now you can get this hostess set when you make a $150 qualifying order, you get to pick a hostess set in the back of the catalog. So this is gonna be a really hot one, I do believe, and it uh, is cut out with that timeless tag punch. So I think you'll have a lot of fun with this punch. A lot of different sentiments will fit into it and just, a punch is so easy to use. So if you have any questions, you can go to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com, and you can uh, see all the measurements and directions. Um, the video is there for you to watch, but I have the measurements wrote down so you can get all prepared to make this if you should so desire. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.